right, and we're going to count from one point to the next. So we have to go up or down to get to the point. We have to go down. So that's one, two, three, right? So that's a negative three going down. So now we can't just say over, oh, we have to say right or left. We have to go to the right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a positive six. So my slope is equal to negative three over <coughs> six, which can be reduced to negative one half. Now if you use it to put in the formula, we just be subtracting the x's and the y's. So that would be negative 3 minus 0. And if I go from negative 3 minus 0, I have to do what? 0 minus what? That's really 0 plus 6, isn't it? Because the negative and the negative make a what? Positive. And doesn't that give me negative 3 over 6 again? Which is really negative 1 half. We get the exact same thing. Is that all? So we have, either way, you're going to get the answer. <coughs> if you can find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, that's the easiest way to go. But you can find any point that fits on the grid between two grid lines, and it'll work. So if somebody picked this one and this one, it would give us two over, I'm sorry, one over two. Maybe one over two. All right. Let's get out. Uh, what we picked up today, which is going to be our characteristics of relations and functions. We need to make sure we pay close attention to what's going on today, because a lot of this is going to be repeats of what <laughs> were, and a lot of you didn't pick up on how to do it. We didn't do too well in our test. <laughs> so we need to make sure we're paying attention. Now, when we're talking about the Cartesian coordinate plane, remember that's just where we graph. It's a flat surface. We're asking to label each axis. So what are my axes on this particular graph? What are my axes? X and Y. Where do I put the X? On the horizontal axis, put our X here. And where do we put our Y? Vertical. Okay, it asks us to label each quadrant. Where is quadrant one at? Oh, yeah, so counterclockwise, exactly right. So we're going to start up here. Or quadrant one. And then this would be what? Quadrant two. This would be quadrant three. And this would be quadrant four. Then we have to indicate the coordinates would be positive or negative in each quadrant. So on quadrant one, my x is going to be what? Positive. positive. We put a plus sign. <coughs> What's my y coordinate going to be? Positive. positive also. So they should be two positive. What about in quadrant two? What's my x is going to be? Negative. negative. So we put a negative sign. Positive. And my y is going to be positive. Quadrant three. Negative. negative. Negative and negative. And what about over here? Positive. 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 Negative. negative. Positive. negative. Hmm. So let's about that. Now the next few pages are just asking us to define those terms and give a representation of them. I'll start you off. I'll do the order pair. Because I know you take care of the order. The order pair I'm going to pick out, it doesn't be any one that I choose. I'm going to say, I'm going to make it a positive 4, <coughs> 2. Okay, I'm going to make it a positive 4, 2. So I'm going to say, this right here is a positive 4, comma 2. That is an ordered pair. So when they ask us to define a verbal description, we say an ordered pair R X and Y coordinates. What's 
Yard you guys follow. What kind of lights about the weather? The lights is just a set of what? A set of warrior pairs. Awesome. Did we spin all five pairs? The time time? So you should have all these, right? Yes. So you have all of them. I just want you to give a graph on the rest of it. The one I want you to go to. Oh, what about discrete and continuous? What's discrete going to look like when I graph them? No. Or it's not going to have a slope. It's going to just have what? A line, straight line. It's not going to be a straight line, and then that would have something going on. What would discrete look like? Just points where? Just points everywhere. Just everywhere. So I'm going to have just points everywhere. <coughs> It has no rhyme or reason. Yeah. What about continuous? It makes a line. It makes a line. It connects. Continuous would be something like that. It can have a starting point and a what? An ending point. And the way you did there, that it's continuous, you go like a line. No, the only way that you would know that it was continuous is if it came up a graph that looks like this. Okay? It has to already be connected. Bless you, by the way. It has to already be connected. Otherwise, if they're just points everywhere like this, you don't connect them just because they're points. Okay? You do not connect them. So in the street, you do not connect. That's how I know that I have discrete gap. If it's already a graph that has something, I don't care what the figure looks like, but if it has a starting point or an ending point, if I have they have arrows on the end, it could be something that looks like this. That's a ray, isn't it? That's still continuous. It had a starting point and then it just goes on. But it's got some type of connection. What about increasing and decreasing? What's going on with increasing and decreasing? Yeah, I can do a positive slope for increasing and for decreasing I can do a what? Negative slope. What else could I draw for increasing? I can start right here and then do what to my line? Take it up, right? What about for decreasing? I have to start where? At the top and do what? Go down. That's decreasing gap. But you have to draw me an example of what it looks like. Everybody got me? Okay. Let's go to the next part. Function notation. Function notation. Function notation just means that instead of me having a Y, I'm going to have a what? F of X. That's the only difference. Instead of me having a Y, I have an F of X. That's the only difference. The only difference. So, if I have F of X is equal to 2X plus 2, that just means that's the equation. I want to find out if I input a 4, what the new value is going to be. I want to find out if I input a negative 1, what the new value is going to be. And you don't know that yet until we input. Okay? You won't know that yet until we input. So, this is how they want you to fill it in. The first one we're going to 
going to fill in the floor. So I'm going to put a floor right here. So that means wherever I see an X, I put a four. So that says two times X, so that's going to be two times what? Four. 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 Then we get our calculators, or we use our head, and we say two times four is eight. Eight plus three gives me eleven. So anytime I input a four, I get out an eleven. So when it says, so the order is there, you put the X first, which is a 4, comma what? Mm -hmm. 11. We input a 4, we get out an 11. Mm -hmm. We put gas in our car, our car will do what? Go. Now what are you going to put over here? Negative 1, you get the same right now. Now down here they give functions of different names. They give you an H, a G, and another G. Can I think it's just minus one? Is that a minus one? Plus. Okay. Plus one. So that means it wants us to use a G function. So where that X is, I'm going to replace that with a what? So when I rewrite this G function, which is this one right here, everybody see what I highlighted? That's the one we're working with. Wherever I see an X, I'm going to put an A plus 1. So that's going to be A plus 1 squared. Where did I get that squared from? That X. See, everybody see that it was squared? So it had an A plus 1. So we put an A plus 1 here, so we have to put a 2 on the outside. And then we have to put also a plus what? Mm. Plus 2. So we got it. Now I want to show you something to get your answer for this one real fast. Make yourself a little window. We call them boxes. Okay. And that just means to write this twice. So we're going to put an A and a 1 here, and an A and a 1 here. And you remember in elementary school, you put your finger on this, and you say, okay, if I multiply this and this together, I'm going to put the answer here. So if I multiply A and A together, how many A's is there all together? A squared. Everybody follow me? Then we're going to do A times 1. What does that give me? A. 1. 1A. I'll look at the number first. Can we just put A? You can just put A also. You're correct. And then we have A times 1 again. That gives me 1A. What about 1 times 1? One? 1. 1. So we take everything out of the box now. So we can start out with A squared. Now we're going to get the answer. Everybody ready? We have A squared. And if you notice, 1A and 1A are like terms. 2A. 2A. Why didn't you tell me A squared? Because it's 2A. It's 2A. We're not multiplying. The only time you would get A squared is when you multiply A times A. But you added 1 plus 1 to save you 2 up. And then what's left over? Oh, 1. Plus 1. And then I have to put plus 2. Why am I putting this plus 2 right here? Yeah, that was there already. Now, is there anything else that I can add on this line? One and two. One and two. Can I add these two together? Yes. No. She says yes. No. Why can't I add those two together? Three yeah, one is an A squared and one is an A. These two cannot be added together at all. So I have A squared plus 2A. But I can add the one plus two, which is going to give me what? Two. So that's me. You can only add A squares with A squares, A's with A's, numbers with numbers. Otherwise, you just leave them where they're at. Okay, look at B. Now, notice I left H and G for you to do. 
Okay, notice I left H and G for you to do. Okay? It says in the function notation, X comma F of X, which F of X is just what letter? No, what is F of X? Y. Which symbol represents the domain? Which one's the domain? X. We say X is the domain. So that doesn't change, does it? Which one represents the range? Right? Same exact thing. What are the benefits of using function notation? What's the, what's the difference between me using a Y here and using an X here? Yeah, you'll know what points I'm putting in. So you will know the value. And we have to write a complete sentence. You will know the value of your domain. You find the what? Not the slope. Where are we finding? Range. Next page, 
going to do the same exact thing. By the way, is this continuous or discrete? It's continuous. How do I know? Yeah, it has a starting point and end point. It might not look like anything, but it has a starting point and end point. What about this one? Continuous also. Continuous also. Continuous also. How am I going to figure out what the domain and range of these are? The first point, what is the surface? And the last one. Got to give me domain. How am I going to figure out what the range is? Do I go from top to bottom or bottom to top? Bottom to top. Yes, sir. Yeah, you start at here, whatever this number is right here. Yeah. Whatever that is, you put it here. You put less than X, less than, and this is going to be equal to. Why is this one just less than and this one's equal to? What's the difference between this point and this point? No, it doesn't have anything to do. What's the difference between this point and that point? That is true. No, and open. one's open, doesn't, isn't this one not color being? Oh, yeah. And this one's color being? So you have to leave this one open, and then you put the other number here. Same thing for your Y, you're going to start off with the number that's on the bottom. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is. And then, and then instead of putting the X, I'm going to put a what? And put the other number. Whatever it is at the top. What about the domain over here? Can I do the same thing? Do I have a starting point and an ending point? No, I have a right. I have a starting point. Everybody sees I have a starting point. And it starts somewhere. So I won't have an interval. This is called an interval. Do I have a starting point and an ending point? Here I just have a starting point. Let me ask you this. On this graph, are my x getting bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger. So I need to put a what kind of symbol? Greater than. Greater than equal. What about a y? Is my y getting bigger according to this graph or smaller? Bigger. Bigger. Greater than equal. Whatever the number is. Everybody follow me? Yeah. And then you got to tell me the function and I know that this stuff. Next part. You know, I need to calculate this part. And you want to do this part first, you have to calculate it, okay? Now, when you're filling the tables, when you go to your calculator, you want to go to Y equals. Let me show you how to get that. You want to go to Y equals. And then you want to put in the equation. The equation was what? Two. Two, and it's absolute value. This is how you get the absolute value. You might want to write this down. You put your mass button. You go over to numbers. And everybody see that ABS? You want number one, or you can hit one, or you can hit M. And that's saying two times the absolute value. And it's asking you, okay, absolute value of what? What was it, X minus one? So we go X, everybody see where X is at, where I put X? Minus one. And then I close parentheses. And then I don't need the graph necessarily yet. I need to fill in my table, right? So I want to put a second graph because that's the same table. And then I fill it in. Yeah, you can move. And the more it up and down, you just move the arrow. Okay? And you find the number that they have because I don't even know what number that is. Whatever it is. All right? Do you have any questions? You may start. You may start. You said calculate. Move your desk around. 